Here we have a triple date with a Valdu 72C chronograph movement lurking inside. As you can see, it's seen better days. This watch is perhaps 70 years old. I would not expect it to be perfect by any stretch, but unfortunately this is not even in average condition. I would suspect that the Perspitz crystal developed a crack at some point, but was never replaced. I can imagine this crack, possibly at around the 1 o'clock position, developed to a point where dust and skin started to creep its way in. If this scenario is true, then it would certainly explain the extent of damage to the dial, which seems to be irrecoverable. I would also imagine that the glass eventually fell out and the hands got caught in clothing, as they are also in a very poor state. I'm not skilled at all with dial restoration, and there's always the debate as to whether a dial should be restored on vintage watches. But I feel that this is far too gone, and later, as you'll see, I attempted a conservative cleanup, and although it did look a little bit cleaner, some numbers started to come away, as you might expect. I've decided that I'll seek a second dial for a triple date Hoyer Valdu 72C, and I suspect that it won't be easy to find. I'll keep this one as part of the watch's providence going forward, but in the meantime, I'll clean this up as best I can and use it until I can obtain something suitable. There are some other problems with this watch movement, and we'll get to that shortly, but for now, let's go ahead and strip this movement down. You may notice that sometimes I place a screw back into position. With these older chronographs, there are so many similarly shaped screws with different depths of shoulder. It's very easy to mistake which ones go where, and so this is my way of managing their locations so that they'll go back into the correct position when reassembling.
Now I've spotted a problem here with the fourth wheel. Unfortunately the extended pivot is bent. As you can see the chronograph wheel attached to it is turning out of true. This is something I'm going to have to deal with shortly. And now with the watch dismantled, I can clean all the parts and get on with the repairs. I start with the fourth wheel pivot. You may remember it's bent. I'm applying a little bit of pressure to the pivot against my small staking block and I'm attempting to worry it back straight. This is a risky job. If the pivot breaks completely, then a new fourth wheel will have to be sourced or a re-pivoting operation will need to be performed. but luckily it all seems good. It's a lot straighter now and I believe it will function well. When taking the watch apart, I noticed the minute jumper spring was corroded and indeed it had a hairline crack and it broke completely. These springs break very easily and have not been manufactured in decades. This unfortunately has made new old stock parts very rare and even if they can be found, they're very expensive. I found a couple for sale, but they were over $140 each. <laughs> I decided to make a new one. I took a piece of steel bar and I cut off a suitable size according to the dimensions of the original. I then filed it to the correct thickness.
I drilled two holes, one for the screw and the other as a guide for cutting out the pattern. And now I can proceed to cut out the pattern. Now I have the rough shape, I can use my diamond files to create the correct geometry. I superglued the part to the leftover stock so as to have a stable base with which to allow me to file the leg down to the correct thickness, which is 0.2 of a millimeter. Unfortunately, my pin clamp has serrated jaws and this has indented the part somewhat. It won't affect the functionality, but I'm a bit disappointed nonetheless. For the future, I'll purchase a, a pin clamp with smooth jaws, or, or maybe I'll file this one and polish it. Now the filing is all done, I can heat the part up so as to loosen it from the superglue. and I can give it a test. Well, it looks okay, but the real test, of course, will come when the movement is reassembled. So as you can see, I've managed to clean a lot of the skin away, which was embedded in the dial, but at the cost of the calendar numbers coming away, I did not expect much, but depending on your viewpoint, it will either look better or worse than when I started. Either way, I'll keep this as part of the watch's providence, as I said before, and I'll source a cleaner dial and make an update video at some point. But for now, I can deal with these hands. They're really quite bent.
and now I can assemble the movement. Over its long lifetime, I can tell it's been stripped and assembled many times. There's many scratches and dings, and I can even see evidence of cleaned up rust. The screws are a bit beaten up, but I suspect the watch will run fine. Let's find out.
the new spring seems to be working well. And now it's time to put it all back together in the case. I'll start by removing the pushers so that I can clean them and give the case a bit of a polish. Unfortunately, the watch is missing its case screws. I'm quite sure I have some old stock. Let's have a look. And now I can fit a new Perspex crystal.
and I can fit the movement back into the case, secure it with the case screws and fit the hands. And let's finish the project with a nice new watch trap. Let's have a look at the timing. Well, it looks okay. It's gaining a little bit, but it's got great amplitude and it's perfectly in beat. I can make a slight adjustment just to tighten it up. And that's it. With the glass on, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it might, but I'm interested to find either a, a restored or new old stock suitable dial. I am quite pleased with the timing performance and all seems to be functioning well despite some issues which needed to be addressed. This is a fantastic watch. It's a real piece of history. I wonder what stories it could tell. But the main thing is, it can be enjoyed again, and that's a good thing. But thanks for watching, and if you've not done so already, please subscribe. It's free, and if you click the bell, you'll be informed whenever I publish new content. And this video was made possible with the support of my many patrons. Thank you so, so much. You guys are amazing. And I'll see you next time.